carrying the mission of being the backbone of the world's most powerful navy through endless aerial sorties. And after a string of resounding victories on the hottest battlefields, these fighter aircraft have created unprecedented pressure on their very creator, forcing the search for worthy successors to replace them. Yes, we're talking about the multi-role carrier-borne FA-18E Super Hornet variants, a pop culture icon and a pillar of the power of U.S. naval aviation. Known as one of the world's leading fighter lines, used for both air superiority and ground attack missions, the FA-18 Super Hornet models are, in fact, upgraded versions of the earlier FA-18 Hornet variants that were fielded by the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps since the 1980s. You may not know that, from the very beginning, the FA-18 Hornet's role was merely to support the F-14. But after the F-14 was retired, the FA-18 naturally became one of the symbols of the U.S. Navy, being the world's first aircraft with carbon fiber wings and among the first tactical jet fighters to integrate a digital fly-by-wire flight control system. This is a suite of high-tech electronic systems linked to flight computers, allowing pilots to adapt easily to aerodynamic changes and meeting high demands for reliability and safety. Far superior to older mechanical and hydraulic flight control systems that were heavy, complex to install, and lacked the ability to integrate backup equipment for emergencies. Thanks to meticulous design from materials to avionics, the FA-18 Hornet became a rare, twin-engine, supersonic, multi-role jet fighter capable of passing the U.S. Navy's stringent trials, maintaining carrier-based combat capability in all weather conditions. Even though the last FA-18 variants in U.S. naval aviation were retired in 2019 after incidents deemed to seriously threaten pilot life and health, ending many years of service for this fighter line. The very solid technological foundation of the early FA-18 meant that, when asked to create a new fighter line meeting higher Navy technical standards, companies like McDonnell Douglas and Boeing Defense, Space and Security, had relatively little extra work to do on the old FA-18 production line. Beyond modest airframe tweaks, a cockpit upgrade with 1910-inch liquid crystal displays and more advanced communications network equipment. From there, the Navy's mainline carrier fighter, the FA-18 Super Hornet, was born in two versions. The single-seat FA-18E Super Hornet and the two-seat FA-18F Super Hornet. Taking on the U.S. Navy's air superiority, anti-surface, and ground attack missions. Notable among the upgrades are Boeing's common helmet-mounted queuing system, the ability to integrate Raytheon's next-generation Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, and a redesigned forward fuselage with fewer parts, along with nose changes to accommodate the AN-APG-79 active electronically scanned array radar, with a detection range of up to 108 km and far greater reliability than traditional PESA radars still widely used even on Russia's most powerful fighters like the Su-30SM and Su-35S. According to the manufacturer, a key strength of this radar line is rapid frequency hopping emissions that make it difficult for the enemy to locate the source, giving the equipped aircraft substantial advantages, especially in air raid tactics favored by the U.S. Navy during simulated strikes. Thus, with just a few upgrades, the U.S. had Super Hornet variants with clearly superior capabilities. Interestingly, the differences between the FA-18 Super Hornet and older FA-18 Hornet versions are so small that even U.S. pilots sometimes confuse them at a glance or from long distance, unable to judge their true size. Accordingly, a standard FA-18EF Super Hornet in today's U.S. naval aviation has a wingspan of about 13.6 millimeters a length of 18.3 mm, a height of 4.87 mm, and a maximum takeoff weight of 29,237 kilo, about 25% larger than earlier FA-18 Hornet versions, which had a length of 16.8 mm, a height of 4.6 mm, a wingspan of 13.5 mm, and a maximum takeoff weight of only 23.5 tons. 
Post-upgrade changes raised the F-A-18 Super Hornet's speed past Mach 1.8. However, for the U.S. Navy, the most significant improvement on the Super Hornet over the earlier F-A-18 Hornet was the first steps toward developing conformal fuel tanks that enhanced the F-414 engine's effectiveness, allowing the jet to carry extra dorsal fuel tanks with 1,590 kilos capacity, directly extending combat radius to 2,346 kilometers without aerodynamic penalties. Later, F-A-18 Super Hornets, especially Block 3, were equipped with the IRST-21 infrared search and track sensor paired with the Legion pod targeting were reconnaissance system, enabling the U.S. Navy to detect and track long-range targets accurately while keeping safe standoff distance for U.S. squadrons and carrier groups. You may not know. To optimize launch and recovery on a carrier's limited deck, twin-engine carrier fighters are often simplified in some functions, especially weapons payload compared with land-based fighters operating from long runways. For example, the F-A-18 Super Hornet carries eight tons of ordnance on 11 stations, far less than twin-engine land-based fighters like the F-15 Eagle, up to 10 tons, and only slightly more than single-engine fighters like the F-16 Fighting Falcon, 7.7 .7 tons. Therefore, to maximize the relatively limited weapons load, America's WASPs, are believed to integrate the ability to track multiple targets precisely at once, even targets using advanced radar jamming. While still masking themselves from enemy electronic reconnaissance, thereby improving success rates in early strikes on critical enemy assets such as long-range air defenses, hangars, and depots, using specialized strike ordnance like GBU-31 JDAM heavy general-purpose bombs. Moreover, F-A-18 Block III improvements include increased airframe durability, extending F-A-18 Super Hornet service life to 10,000 flight hours, giving the U.S. Navy substantial reserve aircraft capacity amid potential conflicts. In addition, the F-A-18 Super Hornet's aerial refueling probe was slightly redesigned to let pilots refuel faster and more safely. Even when the tanker is an unmanned aircraft, such as the MQ-25 Stingray, helping mitigate inherent range limitations of carrier fighters. Recognizing the two new F-A-18 Super Hornet line's advantages in trials, in March 2019, the U.S. Navy awarded Boeing a contract to deliver 78 F-A-18 Block III fighters through 2024. Despite the debut of the Navy's first carrier-deployed fifth-generation stealth fighter, the F-35C, the U.S. naval aviation community chose to keep this older generation fighter line in service, rather than replace it fully with the fifth generation F-35C with more sophisticated technologies. Not only due to F-35C issues of reliability, maintenance cost, and limited air combat performance, but also because the F-A-18 Block III Super Hornet's new sophisticated avionics and extended range complement the Navy's future F-35C plans and work very well alongside fifth-generation jets in U.S. and allied live-fire exercises. Furthermore, the F-A-18 Super Hornet has exceeded expectations by assuming roles in controlling and commanding unmanned aircraft during combined operations. As a result, deploying F-A-18 Super Hornets, even before the F-35C is fully combat-ready, does not diminish overall carrier strike group effectiveness. On the contrary, the F-A-18 Super Hornet, at least for now, remains a perfect puzzle piece supporting other platforms and shielding the entire carrier strike group in complex combat conditions, especially when forced into air combat with large opposing air forces fielding numerous fighters with powerful sustained turn performance like the Su-30SM and MiG-29K. This also means that if the F-35C does not perform as expected, the F-A-18 Super Hornet is still viewed as a perfect fallback capable of meeting U.S. Navy combat requirements in the near term. This is believed to be one reason the Navy decided to extend the Super Hornet's planned service life from the 2030s into the 2040s. Despite F-35C advocates arguing the F-A-18 would be useless in a war against adversaries like Russia, China, or Syria, which are advancing their modern air defense systems. That said, the F-A-18 Super Hornet is not a perfect multi-role carrier fighter, 
and skepticism about it is not unfounded. From its inception, the F-A-18E Super Hornet, intended to replace the heavy air superiority F-14 on Nimitz-class carriers, sparked controversy. Although the F-14 demanded intensive maintenance and high logistics costs, this old-timer proved superior to the F-A-18 Super Hornet in maneuverability and speed. Moreover, in hypothetical scenarios intercepting supersonic bombers like Russia's Tu-22M3, carrying supersonic anti-ship missiles, the F-A-18E Super Hornet, with performance at only 36%, and with disadvantages in weapons payload, combat radius, and range, had no advantage over the F-14, aside from a sleeker, more modern cockpit. Thus, the Navy continued to rate the F-14 highly on carriers. It is said that the F-14 not only outperformed the F-A-18E, but that if equipped with modern avionics and an ASA radar, the second strongest carrier-borne air superiority fighter in U.S. service would still be the F-14, not the F-A-18 Super Hornet. Although today, the F-A-18 Super Hornet is considered one of the most heavily deployed carrier fighters in the world, its most dangerous opponents so far, such as ISIS and the Taliban, were largely lightly armed insurgent units. They did not possess, or possessed only in extremely limited numbers, weapon systems capable of forcing America's WASP to fully exploit its electronic warfare and air combat capabilities, often cited as the main reasons the Navy keeps this fighter in the inventory. Moreover, although it plays a core role in protecting U.S. carrier strike groups from the air, when compared with rival carrier fighters like Russia's Su-33, Speed Mach 1.7, maximum takeoff weight 33 tons, range 3,000 kilometers, and a host of weapons that can seriously threaten a U.S. carrier strike group and naval bases. That would be a major disadvantage if it actually had to face enemy heavy fighters with superior air combat performance, unless there is a substantial pilot skill gap favoring U.S. aviators. Still, some argue the U.S. Navy does not need to focus too heavily on the carrier fighter wing's air superiority capability, because today's U.S. carrier strike group air defenses can already prevent virtually any preemptive attack by any adversary. Under that view, carrier fighters need only escort stealth strike aircraft and suppress enemy defenses. Whether this is an overly optimistic American assumption, as some experts suggest, is an open question, especially now with Russia's naval resurgence and China's rapid growth. Many naval aircraft and anti-ship missiles from these two nations, closer than allies, some say, have been modernized with ranges from 350 to 400 kilometers. Particularly noteworthy is the fast-moving, unpredictable Chinese carrier program, fielding the J-15 Flying Shark, said to surpass the Su-33 in air superiority capability, making the F-A-18 Super Hornet's air dominance mission increasingly challenging. Those are the final updates for today's video. Leave your thoughts below in the comments. See you next time, and have a great day.